I'm going to show you how I set up my dodging and burning. So normally, you, you can, there are a few different methods, and you can use um, curves, darken, brighten, cover them with a black uh, mask, and then uncover them as you progress. You can use a 50% mid gray layer and then paint on it with a white brush, with a black brush. But even if I, I used to use the uh, mid gray layer, but even when I did that, I would still have my dodging layer and my burning layer. I just always try to separate my steps. So if I screw up at any point, I can just remove that and continue. So I don't have to remove all of my work, but I can just eliminate more repeating repetition. So I work with the curves, and I don't do this every time I have uh, the panels that we've created with my Retouching Academy team. And Everything is done by just a click of uh, uh, just a, just one click, and everything gets set up. But I will show you manually how I do that. Um, obviously, you can create your own uh, action, so you don't have to repeat this every time. And it's such a huge action, so a huge time saver. So dodging, I usually just grab, and this is something that you most likely have seen a million times because everyone does it the same way. Whoever does it through curves, they all always the same setup. So a little bit brighter in the mid-tones, I usually do it just about there. And then I invert the mask, and then I add one more curve, and then I darken it a little bit, and I will invert the mask. So this will be my burn, which is darkening, and this will be my dodge, which is brightening. I usually actually have my dodge layer at the top. Then I will put them into one, folder, dodging and burning. And then here, I actually also, we've added some presets right here, uh, which is just a simple soft brush with everything pen pressure turned off. And it's at 1% flow and 100% opacity. And what it does is that you can find a problem to solve and you can just brush over a darkness that you need to remove and not lift up the pan and just continue brushing and brushing and brushing to brighten it. So what happens here is that you're applying, you're uncovering the mask and that brightness is coming through so it becomes brighter and you can always, if you have overdone anything, you can always adjust your opacity or you can even, you know, if you need to brighten everything, you can just work with, you know, you can feather the mask, you can um, decrease the intensity so everything will be brightened. So there are a lot of things that you can do. You can zoom in very, very close and work on those smaller issues. I use my um, keyboard shortcuts a lot, so I just hit a number for example, to change opacity, I just add, uh, hit any number. So one will be 10%, 40% by clicking on four, zero will make it one, uh, 100. And to change your flow, you just hold shift, press shift, and then you just hit a number and the flow is changing. So if I'm working on something that is a little bit contrastier than the rest, then with 1% flow, it will take me a very long time to brighten you know, something that is as dark as this. So I will just, hit, say, 20% flow, and I will just work quickly on something like this. Or 10 if it's too much, and work on something like this. It is a very, very long process, and actually, if you would like to see how it works, if I had an extra hour here, I could continue working, and you would not even see it in real time, because it's kind of building up, and it's best visible when you watch it in time lapse. And that video where I talk about my selection of the brushes on that page, I actually deliberately created a time lapse video where I work on just a flat file with patches and I just uh, dodge and burn, dodge and burn, and it's time lapse video so you can actually see the effects. Because in reality, when you're sitting there and dodge and burn, and especially at 1% flow, that is a very long process. And that's why it takes a very long time. But the precision that you can get with this technique is amazing.